The New York Knicks uh. <laughs> versus the Atlanta Hawks. Woo. The Knicks are the fourth seed. The Atlanta Hawks are the fifth seed. The Knicks are 3-0 and against the Atlanta Hawks this season. And the Knicks will beat the Atlanta Hawks in six games. It won't go to seven. Julius Randle, that man behind me, the GOAT, will not allow it to go to seven. Against the Atlanta Hawks this season, Julius Randle has averaged 37 points per game, 12 rebounds, and 6.7 assists per game, totally dominating and annihilating John Collins. And for me, I think, obviously, the Hawks have Trey Young, and Trey Young is that guy that is really the X factor for the Hawks, even though he's the best player, because the Knicks have struggled with guards, right? They don't have a dominant point guard. You got Alfred Payne, Derrick Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, but Rose is off the bench. I think Tibbs should sit Alfred Payne out for this series. That's just my opinion. I think Frank Nilakina should get more minutes because his defense will be really good on Trey Young. You know, Trey Young will still score and get his buckets, but it will be better. DeAndre Hunter is coming back, so that's a good sign. I'm not trying to, you know, bash the Hawks because they are 26-12 and 12 since Nate McMillan took over. But I think that they're a great offensive team that doesn't play any defense. The Knicks are a bad offensive team that <laughs> play great defense. Yep. But I think in the playoffs when the game slows down and it favors teams that have great defenses, I think the Knicks half-court offense will be fine because Randall has shown that he can – really light it up. Emmanuel quickly is a spark. Derrick Rose is going to get his points off the bench. One of the better six men in the NBA. Alec Burks makes a huge difference. He can flat out score the ball. Reggie Bullock has been a great spot up shooter. And then you look at RJ, the man Barrett, um, future superstar. He's going to, I mean, this series is going to be the series that RJ Barrett puts people on notice. He's going to have a similar effect to what Tyler Hero had last year with the Heat, where you're like, wow, who is this guy? This guy is really balling. That's what people are going to start saying with R.J. Barrett, putting some respect on his name, because R.J. has been getting so disrespected, getting left off of lists, not making the old rookie team, not making the top top players under 25 list. I mean, he has been getting massively disrespected, and this will be the series that he puts everybody on notice, and I can't wait. Nixon six. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, I think this is going to be the best series of the first round. Definitely. You know, I think everybody's been waiting for it. I think the Hawks wanted the Knicks. The Knicks wanted the Hawks. I think these two fan bases, before I got suspended on Twitter, I was watching these two <laughs> fan bases was beefing, going at it like they have real life beef. And it's funny. But, you know, I think the two young teams, you know, shout out to Nate McMillan, shout out to Tom Thibodeau, getting these two teams where they needed to be. Two young teams that needed some playoff experience, they're going to get that. You know, Julius Randle getting his team to the playoffs, Trey Young getting his team to the playoffs. I think those two guys are the consensus best players on the court. And then, like you said, you know, offense to defense. I think the Knicks have the better D. I think the Hawks have the better offensive players. You know, Danilo Gallinari, DeAndre Hunter is back. They have John Collins. They have Bogdanovich who can shoot that three ball. You know, so they got some guys out there that can put up some points. The Knicks, they kind of struggle with that. They have guys that play their role, but defensively, you know, they lock in. So it's like, you know, if I look at the tail of the tape, you know, the Knicks, they have the coach. You know, Tom Thibodeau, he's been the ECFs. He's won a championship as an assistant coach. He's been to the playoffs, eighth seed, first seed, fourth seed. He's won upsets. So, you know, he's won, you know, going back to those days with the Bulls when Joe Kim Noah was our best player, he's won series off just straight defense, you know, when we beat the Nets in seven on the road. He's been he's been through that, so he knows how to get it done. So I I me, I'm personally gonna go with the Hawks in seven. You know, I think this is gonna be a dog fight. I think this is gonna go back and forth. I don't think they have an answer for Julius Randle, but I think the Hawks have too much firepower in Trey Young, John Collins, DeAndre Hunter, Bogdanovich, Danilo Gallinari. I think Clint Capella has been huge for them. He's gonna be huge for them in this series. I think Julius Randle is going to ball out, but I don't know if R.J. Barrett is going to show up. Emmanuel Cookley, they're going to need those young guys to really step up. I know D. Rose is going to pull up, but I don't know how those young guys are going to perform. Same can be said for both teams, but I just, I'm just i more comfortable in the guys in Atlanta because they are more offensively talented than the next guys. So I think I'm going to go Hawks in seven. So you think the Hawks will win a game seven in MSG? Yes. 
Okay. It's ridiculous. That's interesting. <laughs> I think the Hawks go in there and win in game seven. Because I have I have opposite thinking. I feel like this is going to go seven for sure. I think but, it's going to go seven regardless. But I think it's going to go 2-2. Two, two. They're going to slip. They're going to okay. go 1-1-1. One, one, one. Do you think they're both going undefeated at home? I think so. I feel like that's going to that's how it's going to end up shaping out. But this series is going to be unbelievable, especially how you mentioned about how Atlanta is so strong offensively. They have four guys averaging over 15 points. If you want to count uh, DeAndre Hunter, that's six, that's that's five guys averaging over 15, even though he's missed a good amount of time this season. I feel as if the Knicks get the edge because, like you said, their defense has been so stellar uh, throughout the entirety of the season. Uh, you get that home f- home court advantage, which is huge. Uh, the, what was it? The difference of point five between seedings between these two teams. Um, you're gonna need Randall to be the, the the Randall that he's been all season long. Uh, R.J. Barrett's gonna have to be where he's already he's been uh, unbelievable compared to last season to this season, We're averaging 17.6 points per game, six rebounds, four assists, which is very firm out of your number two. You need him to take it another notch up. You need him to average around 20 points, especially with a team that's this lethal at shooting. When you have Trey Young, you have John Collins, Bogdanovich, who has been lights out all season long. You have the interior presence with Clint Capella. So Julius Randle is going to have his hands full, even though I feel Ju- Julius is going to be fine. But this is this is where Julius can show us what he's made of. Is he New York's future? And listen, I, be- I believe in him firmly. Uh, he-, he would be my number two candidate for MVP right now, given the fact that he's made the Knicks relevant once again. But I look for Julius to really break out. But like I said, RJ needs to, to get a bump up in points if they want to handle Atlanta. It's not even just RJ, I think. I think like RJ, Randall, Trey Young, John Collins, I think this is like, this is it. This is the series that really defines what their franchise. The yeah, like yep. because this, you know, this is the first time Trey Young I think Randall being the oldest, but he's still relatively young. He's like 25. 26. 26. Yep. Yeah, he's relatively, like, this, he's reaching that, all right, uh, is this our guy? Trey Young, first time being in the playoffs. R.J. Barrett, this first time being to play John Collins. So this is, like, really the series where, and it's great that we get to see him against each other. This is really the series where we get to see, like, what do we have in our young guys? Are these the young guys we're going to rock on with? Or are these the young guys where we're like, ah, oh, I don't know if we want to pay them. It's still, and this, I think this is big for Julius Randall because, you know, he's under contract next year one more time right and then he's a free agent so this can boost them you know the Knicks they've shown to be patient with their new owners so this is something where they could look at well he had a great regular season he you know wet the bed in the playoffs do we continue to pay this guy or he balls out and we're like all right this guy is legit this guy is definitely our future so I think this is big for both teams you mentioned it Tom Thibodeau is a winning coach he has a winning mentality Nate McMillan shout out to him did a phenomenal job but He's been a first-round exit for the majority of his coaching years. He's had the unfortunate luck of having to go against LeBron a good good portion of those times. I guess so, but it, beat even in he Indiana. Should've, he should've, 2018, he should have won. Beat in Indiana and even in Portland, it was basically a first-round exit for him. Tom Thibodeau, I trust him getting out the first round with this team. This this Knicks team just feels different. And Nate McMillan actually just got fined $25,000. I just seen that, but I didn't know what it was. Or a, uh, he said something about the Knicks. He said... The league wants this. They need this. New York has been out of the playoffs for a number of years. This is the team that our league, they want to see. It's a huge fan base. And the NBA fined him for detrimental public comments asserting bias. He wasn't wrong. He did not cap at all. He didn't cap. Everybody wants to see the Knicks in the playoffs. I get why they fined him. I do get why they fined him. It's the biggest city in the world. They just fined him $25,000. But like I said, you know, I I can very well see this series going to seven. Obviously, I think that's probably what everybody assumes it's going to be. You know, I don't want it to go to seven because I want to have that little bit of comfort yep. yeah. and, and you know, close them out in six. But it would be nice to beat them in seven with our home crowd sure. at MSG. Uh, guys MSG buying, lit game you know, seven. fans buying tickets for $1,000 sitting at the 400 <laughs> level. That's ridiculous. You know, so that's, I, that's I want to see it. I want to see it. And I think the Knicks will pull this one off. Like you mentioned, we were waiting on this matchup. We did not want to face the Heat or the Bucks in the first round. Yeah, no way. This was the perfect matchup for us. Now we got to capitalize and move on to the second round. 